hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel i have a small haul for you guys for today but i also will be talking about my top favorite series of last year i feel like i didn't read a lot of manga last year if i'm being completely honest i i think i read more webtoons and manga last year than i watched anime and uh and read manga combined and i'll be talking about them in this video because two of the three of my favorite series from last year are pickups i got like this past week or two ago all right, so I picked the volumes 7 and 8 of Free Ren. Honestly, no surprise there. I got into the series, or I picked up the series, like, back in 2022. But I didn't really start getting into it, like, last until last year, around this time as well. So this series holds the number one spot. It's my favorite series of last year. Uh, I'm going to talk about the story real quick. And it's basically about a mage called Free Ren. She's in the party of heroes that consisted of Aizen the warrior, Heather the priest, and Himmel the hero. Now, they're tasked to go defeat the demon king. And it takes over a course of 10 years. So the story doesn't actually start at the beginning of that adventure. It starts at the end. Like in the aftermath of that whole adventure after it's all ended. And I thought that was pretty clever. Because I don't think I've read or seen any other like story like this. Unless it's not coming to my mind right now. But anyways, the reason it takes place after this whole adventure is because Freerin is an elf. And elves live for thousands and thousands of years. So for her, this 10 year adventure seems like almost nothing. But we later find out that even though she says it was only... 10 years of her life we find out that it probably impacted her the most throughout her whole life up to this point now i don't know what it is about this series i couldn't put my finger on it but i think i know what it is now and it's like it kind of gives me this feeling of nostalgia for whatever reason you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of that song ditto from new jeans if you've seen the music video you know what i'm talking about it's like you you're you're not there but you feel like you're there and there's like this feeling of nostalgia just comes over you like that's kind of what i feel for this series just a feeling of nostalgia but i think the reason why i feel like that in general i don't know if anybody else feels like this but the reason why i personally feel like this is because we get a snippet of these characters you know of himmel heather and aizen at the beginning of the story but their character truly comes alive whenever free rent has a memory or a flashback of them or whenever even a side character has a flashback of these characters a good example of this is himmel because he's often described as a straight arrow you know truly a true hero of heroes and we see through the flashbacks of his fellow party members that yes he was a true hero but he was also genuinely kind he was a true leader and he likes to have fun he was he was like joking all the time you know he always encouraged free women whenever she had this wacky spell <laughs> as you can tell i absolutely love this series pick it up if you can start reading it or you know what you can actually watch the anime for this as well the anime is still ongoing and i believe it's about to catch up to volume six i think it's like currently around volume five or something i can't remember too well but but the anime is absolutely amazing you should try watching the anime actually first and then reading if you um enjoy the anime the music in free Ren is amazing if i'm being completely honest i didn't really care for the first opening i really like the second opening though and the ending the ost like i don't know what it is about anime but osts just always hit the mark no misses on this ost anyways read free Ren if you can if not watch the anime Okay, moving on to the next series I have here. This one I'm super excited to read. So it's called Go Go Loser Ranger. I have volume 3 right here, but I also picked the volumes 1 and 2 on a Barnes & Noble run I did. You guys will see those two volumes in that video that's going to be coming out soon. But for now, I'll just briefly talk about this series because I still don't really know what it is about. But I have a general idea of it. So it's about these group of like aliens or monsters, whatever. They come down to Earth to try to invade, but they're stopped by a group of Sentai. Sentai are basically like Power Rangers and they broadcast this. So the general public loves these Power Rangers. Now on screen, they're these heroes or whatever that people look up to. But we see that behind the scenes, these Power Rangers are absolute jerks. They mistreat these little minions or monsters or whatever. And there's one in particular that's had enough. 
So he takes it upon himself to disguise himself as a human, become a Power Ranger, and go up the ranks. Because there's like a ranking system in this hero slash Power Ranger society. So he wants to go up the ranks and be able to destroy them from the inside. I'm guessing this is sort of like if the boys, My Hero Academia, and Power Rangers had a baby all together. I've never seen the boys, but I've heard that the it's like about superheroes as well. And the top hero is like a complete jerk. So I feel like the story already sounds fun and like already like pretty interesting. So I can't wait to start reading it. All right, next up I have here is volume seven of Sakamoto Days. I'm going to go over the story a little bit because this also holds my number two spot of my fairy series of last year. The story is basically about this ex-hitman slash assassin who he's like part of this organization and he's the top dog in this org. Now he meets this lady, he falls in love with her and decides to retire and start a family with her. However, there are people from this organization who come and scout him to try to get him to join back or just to get rid of him for good. But even though Sakamoto is a bit rusty, he still has it in him. That's the general like consensus or gist of the story. There's a, like a lot more to it, but that's the general what you need to know basically. So now the reasons why I love this series. Well, for starters, it's a shonen. Y'all know I love a good shonen. Two, the characters in this series are wild. And I mean that in a good way. There's a large cast of characters. But the good thing is that the way their character design or um, like their personality is, it's so different from one another that honestly, even though there's a lot of characters, I never found myself confusing one character for another. And most of these characters are adults, which was pretty rare in my opinion for a shonen series to have adult characters. I don't think I've read anything else like that aside from kaiju number eight, basically. And three, I would say the combat in this series is really good. There's no power system or at least where I left off. I left off around the hundred chapter mark. Because I had caught up to all the chapters and I was waiting for chapters to pile up on me. Up until like the 100 chapter mark, there wasn't really anybody who would use powers. They would all use, you know, their fists or guns or anything they would find in their environment, really. Like there's this scene where they're on an airplane and they have to kill the person who's next to them with whatever like weapon or tool they would get. And there was somebody who got like a spatula or something or some cooking utensil. I thought it was pretty funny, though. But yeah, overall, a really fun series. Highly recommend if you guys haven't started reading it already. Okay, anyway, so I have Free Ran in my number one spot. Sakamoto Days in my number two spot. And I have another one in my number three spot. Oh, by the way, the haul is over. I'm, I'm going to start talking about uh, my favorite series right now. Oh, my last favorite series. So this is a pure romance slash shoujo series. It's as the title implies, it's about a witch who should have secluded like in the woods away from town because they're not too fond of witches. And one day this knight comes to her doorstep asking for a love potion. Now this isn't any other knight. For one, this knight is the best friend of the princess of the kingdom they live in. And two, it's her crush. So she feels a bit weird doing a love potion for him, but she decides to do it anyways because she's like, I could just get him out of here quickly, whatever, and I could get money. The thing is, though, he has to visit her daily because even though he is the one who asked for this potion, he has to bring the ingredients to her because some of the ingredients can be, can be a bit tricky to get. And so our knight starts to visit her pretty frequently. At first, he's kind of wary of her. He doesn't really trust her. But as time progresses, we see that he wants to get to know her a bit more. And our little witch here, true to her word, keeps him at an arm's distance. She treats him like a customer. And she doesn't even tell him, like, her name. Whenever he refers to her, he refers to her as, like, witch or miss witch. But she definitely has a name. But we get to see that her one-sided crush might not be so one-sided down the line. Anyway, it's a really cute story overall. I will say, though, this is a light novel turn manga i really wish the light novel was translated because we get a little snippet of it in the manga that's one and then two a lot of the art is pretty simple i don't know how to describe it but it's nothing like berserk or nothing like vinland saga it's pretty simple and still pretty to look at but a lot of the panels don't have a lot of background to it like they're plain it's just dead space i don't care 
particularly about that as long as the story is good but there's i know there's some people who really don't like that so i just want to let you guys know that in case you guys were interested in picking it up overall i still really like the story and where it's progressing one thing that's absolutely killing me is how slow the releases are though please <laughs> Please, I don't know. I, I don't know how far the light novels at or how far the manga's at right now. But at least I half the three volumes are out. I don't know if the fourth volume has been released yet, but Jesus, the releases for this are so slow. Anyways, that's about it. Those were my top three um series of 2023. It was one, I am a witch, and my crush wants me to make a love potion for him, two. I have Sakamoto Days and one I have Free Run. I don't know if I'm going to make a list for anime. I did watch more anime, I feel, than I read manga. But even then, yeah, I don't know if I'll make a list for it. But if I don't, I'll, I'll include it in some random video like I did here. But I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.